Hey, this is Gabe Weaver, Senior Product Manager of the Project Management Group in the Plan Stage. Uh, we're going to be talking about our 13.1 kickoff. Um, lots of balls in the air, lots of things we're trying to wrap up that are pretty close to the finish line. At high level, we're going to continue uh, working on iterations and improving our time box reports. Um, so the basic gist of this uh, is we have the basic ability to create an iteration and associate an issue to it, but we don't have a ton uh, in terms of what you see within the iteration report itself. So in 13.1, we're going to work on an MVC for the iteration report view. Uh, and as soon as we have this MVC done, we'll make this generally available. Uh, it's going to follow a similar pattern to uh, milestones, but in this case, we're building this uh, as a view app first, and then we're going to backport some of the things that we improve within uh, the time box report view and uh, back to the milestone view uh, with our more kind of more modern approach for how we implement this. So I think for the MVC, uh, for the iteration report view, we're going to have a burn up, burn down chart, a burn up chart, which we're already working out for milestones, and then a basic issue list. Um, and then future iterations, we're going to look at uh, replacing the cluttered list of uh, tabs at the top with a group by function that lets you uh, group um, issues or merge requests by different attributes like project or label or assignee, and then eventually looping in epics into this view too, so you can get a progress report on your epics during iteration or milestone view. So uh, that's where that's at. Uh, we're also going to be continuing work on real time. Uh, the first field that we're going to be working on getting working is the assignees in real time and an epic list. Uh, if you want to check it out, a uh, link from this issue into uh, the uh, first implementation issue. As you can see, we're getting pretty close with this with the working group. Lots of contributors from across the GitLab are, are helping out, making sure that this works uh, from an infrastructure and delivery standpoint, both on self-managed and .com. Um, but you can actually check out a uh, video of this working in a local environment on master, which is pretty cool. I'm not going to show it here, but um, you can update and assign in one client and see it automatically update another. So that's getting exciting. We're getting pretty close to having this first field updating in real time via web sockets. Um, next up, Jira Importer. We're going to continue making progress here. Uh, in 13, we ran into a couple of roadblocks in terms of how to approach user mapping uh, and how to approach parsing Jira syntax and converting that to GitLab flavor markdown. We ran a couple of research spikes in both directions and kind of hit a few brick walls and had to backtrack a little bit. Um, but I think we've settled on a way that we're going to do um, mapping issues or mapping um, users from Jira to GitLab. And that's basically going to consist of uh, showing display name for all the Jira users and then allowing GitLab uh, within the UI to select from a drop-down members of the existing project that they want to map to. Um, we opted for this over the CSV just because you don't have to leave GitLab to get it working. You don't have to go export a list and then cross-reference that with a project members list on a project. Uh, but in the future, we might support uploading a CSV or a JSON file if, if that's desirable. Um, back to the next thing. Uh, we also are working on a number of quality of life improvements, and this is in conjunction with the um, UX and engineering OKRs for lovability and UX improvements as well as performance. Um, some There's a large list of targeted areas we're going to focus on. If you want to click through that issue, you can look it up. But for this particular release, uh, we're going to make it so easier to remove labels from issues, epics, merge requests, um, and hopefully doing that with uh, a single click. We're still settling on the best implementation approach. Uh, we'll either do it uh, with um, uh, an X, or we're going to show all the applied labels in the top of the uh, label picker whenever you open it. We're still exploring which one would be more performant. There's trade-offs to both, um, so we haven't settled there, but we'll hopefully get some feedback from uh, some of the research we're doing within the next couple of days to solidify the right path there. Uh, we're also going to work on sticky issue titles and um, issues and hopefully epics and maybe in Mars if that works there. But the basic idea is we want to keep the, the tile sticky. So if you get deep linked into an issue, uh, you understand what the con context is right away. Based on some user research uh, that we did this week, we're also going to include the status along with the tile for the first iteration and then eventually work towards including uh, moving the tabs, the design tab and the discussion tab up to the top to follow the same pattern as merge requests and then port that same behavior over to epics eventually. Um, so there's lots of exciting things here we're doing to try to improve uh, issues. And the main problem that we want to solve is making it so that people don't have to scroll up and down to interact with the issues. So if you're deep in the comments, we want you to be able to edit the issue title and the description and then return right back to where you were um, reading. So you don't have to scroll. Um, that's the long-term goal with that. Uh, we also are working on the ability to assign an epic to a subgroup upon creation. 
So right now, when you are uh, creating an epic at a top level group, you can't uh, create that epic and assign it to a subgroup. So this is kind of um, what it looks like now and what it will look like after is you can select the subgroup um, that you want to assign this to. And so we'll, the benefit of this is you will be able to do kind of top down planning. If you have a subgroup that you know is part of your portfolio and value stream, you can create uh, the epic here, assign it there, automatically have it show up within your, um, your epic that you're planning as well as in that subgroup level. Uh, so it's pretty, it'll be a nice thing for the creation of, of, of epics within epics. Uh, we also want to fix the select and search inputs across the product. This is a big headache when you try to move an issue. Uh, there's a lot of different problem areas. If you try to create an issue from a group level project issue list, you can only see a couple of the items, usually not the project that you want to target. So we're going to look across the board, do an audit of where all of the places we need to fix this and try to do it in a more global manner so that there's a better experience across the board using that uh, component. Uh, and then the last one for quality of life, we're going to work on um, properly showing inherited labels within projects. So the problem this is targeting right now is if I'm in a deeply nested subgroup uh, in a project, I can't set priority labels on inherited labels from a top level parent group. Um, so it kind of defeats the purpose of having inherited labels. And also uh, has led to a lot of our customers creating duplicate labels on the project level that already exist at the group level because they can't see them within the, uh, the label view itself. So. That's one of the things we want to focus on fixing. And then we're also going to be collaborating with uh, the portfolio group to work on Epic Swim Lanes on issue boards. That's a really important thing we want to contribute to. And uh, we're going to put all the resources we can to uh, move that forward with portfolio management. That's it for 13.1. Um, again, if you want to look at this, you can uh, issue 100 in the plan project in GitLab.org. Thanks. Bye.